So now we have the switch light in pieces, it's time to build it back up. We'll start with putting the new digitizer and the new LCD in place, so the touchscreen and the LCD, and then we'll just rebuild the console in reverse order. So let's just jump in and get this job done, and then we can enjoy our new switch light with a brand new touchscreen and LCD. So starting with the new touchscreen we have here, all we have to do is get this board upright in the way you'd look at it with the ribbon on the right side. And you'll see this little PCB ribbon here. This bit slides under this plastic rib and in between those two bits is where the plastic actually sits. This bit sits under, so you go underneath like that. So from this side, you'd see this ribbon going underneath. This ribbon will also go underneath. And from this side, if we slide in and watch for this little black ribbon going under the plastic, like so, so it's just lipped under, and then gently push in and down, and that's in position. I'll secure this with a DC if once we're happy, because we can gently lift it up once we've assembled it and remove any dirt or dust, and then we can sort of adhere this back down as the final step, not the first. So turning that over now, instead of gluing the LCD to the screen, which again makes it impossible to service. Instead, I like to just stick a little bit of electrical tape. And you can see the slight change in black around the screen. So you can see it's like slightly lighter on the outer edge and darker on the inner. That is the actual LCD inside. So where you see this lighter border, like up to here, that isn't gonna be LCD. So when you tape on it, you're not gonna see that. So if you tape right near the edges, if we take this frame that's going back in, what you will find is, if we find the hole this way up, and we get this flexible ribbon, and we fold it this way around, place the ribbon through that hole, like so, and then gently fold the LCD over. You'll find that the LCD rests and locks into this metal frame, this border here, all around. And once it's in that frame, it has almost no movement. So once it's in this frame, we can just apply this tape down to the metal cage. And you can see I've cut it to just wrap it around the screw holes. And the same this side, I've just taped here. And now the screen is in place, won't go anywhere, and is very easily serviceable when we want to come and replace this. We'll just get rid of any obvious dust out of this touch screen, and we can do the final cleanup after and then placing this back in place the right way, like so. To secure this down, we had one longer screw here, which is this longer Phillips screw, and these were the smaller ones. So the long one goes here in this top hole, and the smaller ones go here. Moving on to the left Joy-Con area now, we'll place the Joy-Con back in with the ribbon pointing down. We'll get the flex ribbon from underneath there, and using the Joy-Con screws, which are about this long, and Phillips or Posi again, screw the Joy-Con into place. We'll place all the buttons back in place. So we have the minus button and rubber. We have the D-pad and its rubber. We have the circle button down here and its rubber. And now we can place the actual Joy-Con circuit board in place. So to do that, we want to lift up this Joy-Con ribbon here and just hold it. And then slide the circuit board through that area. While that's through, just grab this ribbon, lift up and place down. Now that board's in place, we just secure it with the screws. And if you remember, the larger two holes here with the larger gold area, use these longer Phillips silver screws. And the other holes use the shorter Phillips gold screws. These two hold the trigger in place, the LZ trigger. This one holds the speaker in place. So we're just gonna screw in the center two for the moment. So now let's just get the speaker in down here. So for the speaker, we just keep this ribbon against the wall and we want this ribbon going between the speaker and the wall and just place it down like that. 
get the other gold screw and secure the speaker in place. And now if we move up to the top, first we have this trigger, so the L trigger. You want to push this spring into this grey plastic latch here first. So it hits there. And then with that spring in, you want to gently lift up and get the circle of the trigger in place. And the other trigger down here. If the spring comes out like this, you can either just try again, or if you've got tweezers, you can just gently pry the spring into place like that but if you haven't got tweezers you can just remove it and do it again and try and keep the spring in place while you situate this trigger next up we'll place the alz trigger back in place and before we do that we want to place the little rubber over the contact pad and then the trigger sits over here and to get a good accuracy instead turn this over place the rubber into this slot first and then place it down on the circuit board and that ensures the position's accurate. Now this is in, use the two other golden Phillips screws to secure this trigger in place. And you'll notice it sits over this white stump locating it. And then the screw holes align nice and easy. Now we have the triggers working fine. We'll take the power and volume button board, slide it into this groove, and then pass the ribbon through the slots in the trigger board and then now we want to get these ribbon connectors back in so we lift the black latches we grab the tweezers and get them inserted push either side to make sure they're secure and flick the latch back do the same for the screen ribbon and make sure it's all the way in and then send the latch down turn the board around we will put this interconnect ribbon in place this time you can see the latches at the front so you lift that up with the help of the tweezers get the ribbon into place and then just make sure nudging the sides with the tweezers that it's fully inserted and then send the latch down the speaker can be connected just the same way and the Joy-Con connector is the same as the other one a latch at the back that's black lifted up insert it in make sure it's all the way in and flick the black latch down now we'll do the other side exactly the same kind of thing when it comes to inserting these buttons you'll actually see that the shells have written on X, Y, B and A. So it's nice and easy for you to remember where to put them. So we have a Y button here and you can see Y's over here. So that allows us to nice and easily just insert the buttons in the correct order. We have the plus at the top. We have the home button at the bottom with the home obviously facing upright and the rubber facing this specific way so that this rectangle here goes against this rectangle here joycon again we'll install the same with the ribbon pointing up this time and at this stage we can place the main board back in now so we want to be aware of this ribbon the battery connector these two antennas this ribbon this ribbon and the joycon ribbon so there's a lot to think about here but if we do this right it's fairly easy so if i start by looking down this corner and these two ribbons here we just make sure they're sitting over the board i hold this one out the way and i slide the board into position like this so now we have this ribbon out the way the battery out the way and these two sitting above before we lay it down here we want to focus on what's in this area now so this ribbon will just fold over so it's no problem however the touchscreen ribbon under here we want to just gently get with tweezers and move out the way so that it sits on top of the board now not underneath and the joycon ribbon finally here we can just gently lift the board up still and pull the ribbon around and we have all ribbons in place so we'll start by just placing the speaker back in while the board's loose because this speaker kind of rests under the circuit board so we lift the circuit board up slightly to get the speaker in 
and once it's under this lip the first screw we'll put down is one of the slightly longer gold screws to secure the speaker into the board we have another gold screw here next to the speaker so let's get them out of the way so that's two out of the three gold installed and the third gold is by the joycon ribbon so if we do those first you can kind of remember that the three gold longer screws are all in this little triangle here there'll be more gold screws here when we put the trigger back in the rz but for the main circuit board that's now those screws in let's now put the three silver shorter posi screws in one is by where the cpu fan will sit and two more are for the usb connector let's jump back up to the top here and connect the r trigger just like we did the l putting the spring in here first lifting up and getting the circle in and now that triggers in place we'll take the zr and the rubber place it inside turn it upside down try and hold the rubber in place while we position this and then let go using the two longer gold screws again we will screw down and now we have the triggers in place and all the buttons in place here that all work and feel right so there's only a few pieces left now to put back together we'll put the cpu fan in place so this just sits over here it uses these distinctive black screws that you can't really mix up with any others and there's three one goes here and again once you've placed this in make sure this ribbon is comfortably sitting where it should and the same with this black antenna this can now lock into this groove in the shell so it comes around the cpu and not in the way of the screw holes and now let's just make all the connections to the ribbons so we don't have all these loose ribbons so starting with the touch screen one at the top here this is a front lifting black latch so you lift it backwards you then want to sort of pull back on the connector line it up and let the tension kind of do the work for you to get it in position once it's in position you'll see that the edges here line up with the connector and you can pull down the latch to lock it in place we'll do the same for this lcd connector here it's the same front lifting latch this time white and the exact same principle kind of pull back on the connector to get it in place here and then push forward when it's in alignment and once it's in so far you can push with your tweezers to get it to sit all the way into the connector once it's in just latch down and that's the lcd connected we have the joycon connector here same as the other one just pull back it's a backwards latch and the connector goes in and the latch goes down speaker the same as the other side simply place the speaker in and push down to lock in place moving over to this side of the board this will be the card reader that will connect in a moment but let's not forget the cpu fan so the cpu fan is a front lifting latch so you want to lift the latch up this has the white line indicating how far you should insert the ribbon and you can see this one has the white line indicating how far you should insert the ribbon and that kind of lines up with the dots here and then just latch that one down this one's a little bit tricky because it's in such a confined little space we have the antennas here so the black and the white antennas you just simply align them up over the hole and then push down so you can see if we turn one over it's basically an outer ring on the connector clicks around this ring here so we just turn it over align it up by eye and you'll kind of feel it partly latch when you're sort of in the right position and then just push down evenly over and it sort of latches over and then it will free spin when it's on the latch so you can position it how you like we'll connect this battery very last but because this ribbon goes over we're going to leave these two out until we're done the last thing we want to do is apply power to the board so we have now the heat sink for the cpu this sits here sits back over the cpu and then we have the three short silver phillips screws And finally, we have the game cart reader and audio board. 
So this you can put on after if you prefer, or you can just slide the ribbon under like this. These can go in either order really. And with the latch up, you can probably get the ribbon in as you're simply positioning this card reader in place. It kind of naturally goes in like that. Latch it down and lock these two things into position. And there's your card reader and headphone socket. And this is held in by seven screws. So let's just put all those in. And with that back in place, that's everything now connected except the battery and this interconnect ribbon. So let's now connect them up. We're going to have to connect the battery first because that sits under the ribbon. So the battery just simply clicks in to the connection. And then this interconnect is a front lifting white latch. So we lift that up at the front. And then this interconnect ribbon, like all the others, slides into place and locks down. And that's the ribbon in place. Just bear in mind now this console is technically juiced up and we should be able to power it up. Let's just put the back cover on first. So we have the metal back plate that sits over. If you can remember when we disassembled this, it had one long gold screw on the left. So that will be this pad with the extra gold on it. And then the other screws were small silver screws. One down at the bottom right by the speaker. And the final one up by the card reader. We now place the back cover on. If we looked at the top, we'd want the circle of the headphone socket going over the circle of the actual headphone connector. And once that's over, you can kind of click the back cover all into place. We have the final four Phillips screws on the thin edge. And the final four screws are the longer tri-wing screws, which are the only tri-wings on the switch light. And that's it done. So there is our finished reassembled switch light. All the buttons click, everything appears to work. We'll now peel this off. And I could now just gently lift up here in this corner, lift up this LCD here, clean all under here as I wish, and then I can just put a little bit of adhesive here double sided and stick the lens back in. But for the main importance, can we turn on? And there we have it. Our switch light is fully working. So hopefully that helps you with any kind of disassembly and reassembly and repair of the switch light, all the way down to complete screen replacements, touch screens, and how to access every part of the console. If you like these and want to see any more teardown videos, do let me know. I get limited time on videos, so it's important to pick the right ones that you guys are interested in, and the ones that are most beneficial to you as viewers. But hopefully this one was useful. I'm doing a lot of switch repairs at the moment and there will be a switch repair series coming up. But that's it for this disassembly and reassembly of the switch light and I'll catch you in the next one.